just like learning any other skill, pilots must begin with learning the fundamentals of flight before moving on to more advanced maneuvers and skills. The four fundamentals of flight are the building blocks necessary to develop the skills needed to be a great aviator. The four fundamentals of flight that must be developed first are straight and level flight, turns, climbs, and descents. This video will explain the second fundamental of flight, turns. In order for a pilot to turn an aircraft and maintain a level altitude, the pilot must simultaneously and smoothly apply aileron and rudder inputs in the direction of the turn, which is then followed by back elevator control inputs and, if necessary, a slight power increase to maintain a desired altitude. If a pilot were to only use the ailerons to make a turn, the aircraft's nose will turn in the opposite direction of the desired turn initially, then begin turning in the correct direction. This is known as adverse yaw. If a pilot were to only use the rudder to turn, the aircraft would turn in the direction of the rudder pedal that the pilot is stepping on, but the aircraft would start to descend. A pilot can use their body position and any feelings they experience while turning to tell if they have improper aileron or rudder inputs. The pilot's torso will move too much if aileron or only aileron is being applied in the turn. If too much rudder or only rudder input is being used in the turn, the pilot will feel increased pressure or a sinking sensation on the side of their seat that the rudder is being applied to. To prevent uncoordination, adverse yaw, and altitude changes in level turns, the pilot must use the ailerons, rudder, and elevator appropriately. The pilot must add aileron and rudder inputs equally. For instance, if a pilot were to roll into a turn quickly, they should briskly apply both aileron and rudder in the direction of the turn. Oppositely, if a pilot roll into a turn slowly, the aileron and rudder would be applied together slowly. If a steep turn was being made, a large amount of aileron and rudder should be applied in the direction of the turn, whereas when making a shallow turn, smaller aileron and rudder inputs should be used. The key is to match the aileron and rudder inputs to remain coordinated. Then, add back pressure to compensate for the loss of vertical lift as needed. If a pilot briskly neutralizes the aileron input, they must also briskly neutralize their rudder input. If a pilot slowly neutralizes their aileron input, they must also slowly neutralize their rudder input. For example, if the pilot wants to turn the aircraft left, they would move the control wheel to the left, which raises the left elevator. This causes the left wing to drop and the right wing to raise. At the same time as the aileron input, the pilot smoothly steps on the rudder pedal on the same side as the aileron input, in this case the left rudder. This keeps the nose and tail of the aircraft on the same flight path, preventing the aircraft from slipping or skidding through the turn. Shortly after the aileron and rudder inputs are made to begin the turn, the pilot must increase back elevator pressure to maintain the desired altitude and adjust for the decrease in vertical lift. It may also be necessary to increase the throttle slightly to increase thrust and generate more lift, preventing the aircraft from descending during the turn. The airplane is now in a level turn. Once the desired back angle of the turn is reached, the pilot neutralizes the rudder inputs and adjusts back elevator pressure to maintain altitude. What the pilot does with the ailerons is dependent on the bank angle of the turn. There are three types of turns a pilot must learn shallow, medium, and steep turns. Shallow turns are generally 20 degrees of bank or less. If a pilot were to relieve aileron inputs while in a shallow turn, the inherent lateral stability of the airplane will slowly level the wings. This means the pilot must maintain the appropriate aileron input to maintain a shallow turn. Medium turns are generally between 20 to 45 degrees of bank. At medium bank angles, the airplane's inherent lateral stability does not return the wings to level flight. As a result, the airplane tends to remain at a constant bank angle without any flight control pressure held by the pilot. The pilot neutralizes the aileron flight control pressure to maintain the bank. A common medium bank used in turns is 30 degrees. In Epic Flight Academy's Cessna 172s, this can be confirmed by making the wing strut parallel to the ground below. This is a sight picture that pilots can reference. Steep turns are generally 45 degrees or more of bank. The airplane continues in the direction of the bank even with neutral flight controls, unless the pilot provides opposite flight control aileron pressure to prevent the airplane from overbanking. This is known as overbanking tendencies. 
Overbanking is caused by the raised wing of an airplane to generate more lift than the lowered wing, which causes the airplane to roll into a steeper turn unless the pilot applies opposite aileron input. The amount of opposite flight control pressures is dependent on various factors, such as bank angle and airspeed. In general, a noticeable level of opposite aileron flight control pressure is required by the pilot to prevent overbanking. Pilots also control the radius of their turn by adjusting the bank and power settings through a turn. If a pilot maintained the same bank angle in a turn but wanted to widen the radius of their turn, they would increase the power. If they wanted to decrease the radius, they would reduce the power. If a pilot leaves the power setting the same, they can increase the radius of the turn by decreasing their bank angle, and decrease the radius by increasing their bank angle. The pilot will also need to adjust elevator pressure accordingly to remain in a level turn. A pilot's position in their seat should not change when turning. At first, student pilots may find themselves bending their torso to remain perpendicular to the horizon. Instead, they should sit straight in their seat and let their body turn with the aircraft. Before a pilot begins a turn, they should choose a reference outside such as a building, road, body of water, faraway cloud, or other terrain to turn to. This will give the pilot a visual reference to use when preparing to roll out of a turn. As a pilot enters a turn, they move their focus outside and use their sight pictures to maintain a level turn. Looking out of the windscreen, the pilot will notice that the horizon will be closer to one side of the glare shield and may even cut through the glare shield and instrument panel if the turn is steep. The side of the cockpit furthest below the horizon is the direction of the turn. This sight picture initially can cause pilots to climb when making a left turn and descend while making a right turn, known as parallax view. A pilot must remember this error when making turns and adjust elevator pressure to maintain a level turn. Looking out towards the wings, the pilot can determine if they are turning. The wing on the same side of the turn direction will be closer or even below the horizon, whereas the wing opposite of the turn direction will be above the horizon. In a level turn, the leading and trailing edges of the wing will remain parallel to the horizon. If the wings are parallel to the horizon, the lower wing is opposite of the desired turn, or if the leading and trailing edges of both wings are not parallel to the horizon, the pilot is not in a level turn in the direction they desire. They will need to correct the sight pictures until they are in the desired turn. A helpful tip is to imagine a laser coming out of the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and putting the laser on the horizon. Sight pictures can also be used to determine if the aircraft is coordinated throughout a turn. If the nose of the aircraft is outside the aircraft's flight path in the turn, the aircraft is slipping, which means not enough rudder is being applied in the direction of the turn. If the nose of the aircraft is inside the aircraft's flight path in the turn, the aircraft is skidding, which means too much rudder pressure is being applied in the direction of the turn. When the aircraft's nose is traveling along the flight path in the turn, the aircraft is coordinated. A pilot also uses the feelings they are experiencing in a turn to determine if the aircraft is coordinated. If a pilot feels like they are being pushed to the inside of their turn, they are in a slipping turn which means not enough rudder pressure is being applied in the direction of the turn. The pilot should increase the rudder input until the feeling moves from the outside of the turn to down through the floor of the aircraft. If a pilot feels like they are being pushed to the outside of their turn, they are in a skidding turn, which means too much rudder pressure is being applied in the direction of the turn. The pilot should lessen the rudder input until the feeling moves from the outside of the turn to down through the floor of the aircraft. After referencing the necessary sight pictures and feelings, the pilot scans their instruments to cross-check that they are in a level turn. Their airspeed and altitude should remain constant, their attitude indicator should show a turn in the direction the turn is being conducted, but no climb or descent. Their inclinometer or slip skid indicator should show the aircraft is coordinated, and their vertical speed should be zero feet per minute. After the instrument scan is complete, the pilot begins scanning their sight pictures again. This process is continuous throughout the flight. It is important that pilots spend 90% of their flight time scanning outside the aircraft for traffic, terrain, and weather, and 10% of the time inside the cockpit scanning instruments and doing other tasks. Pilots can also use the elevator trim to alleviate any excessive control wheel pressures during a level turn. As the pilot approaches the desired heading or reference point in a turn, they need to prepare to roll out of the turn and enter straight and level flight. To do this, the pilot should reference their attitude indicator and determine their bank angle of the turn. 
A rule of thumb for smooth transition from a turn to straight and level flight is to begin rolling out before the target heading or reference point by half of the aircraft's current bank angle. For example, if a pilot wanted to roll out of a right turn on a 100 degree heading and sees their bank angle on their attitude indicator is 30 degrees, the pilot should begin rolling the aircraft to straight and level half of the bank angle, which is 15 degrees, before the target heading of 100 degrees, which would mean at a heading of 085 degrees, the pilot should start to roll out of the turn and should be wings level at a heading of 100 degrees. After the pilot has leveled the wings after turning, they use the sight pictures, instrument cross-check, and necessary elevator trims to maintain a straight and level flight attitude. Student pilots should practice entering level turns at shallow, medium, and steep bank angles while maintaining altitude and coordination throughout the turn, increasing and decreasing a turn's radius using bank angle and power adjustments, and rolling out on visual references and desired headings until this skill becomes natural. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.